As you might be able to tell from my channel name, I love Final Cut Pro, but just because you really love something doesn't mean that thing can't annoy you sometimes. Just ask my wife. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about a few things that really annoy me inside of Final Cut Pro, and more importantly, how I might fix those things to make it a better user experience for editors in Final Cut Pro. Quick and important note, this video is not supposed to be some sort of hate piece towards the Final Cut Pro developers. It's more so just a way to offer some suggestions so that we can all have a better app for editing. With that said, I do not want to see comments ragging on the Final Cut Pro development team. Rather, I think we should be offering constructive criticism and more importantly, using the link I've left down below so that you can offer feedback to the Apple developers. The first thing that I want to talk about is my frustrations with compound clips. Now, I love using compound clips. You can select a whole bunch of clips, you can right click on them and put them into a compound clip. But what if I need to make some changes inside of that compound clip? Well, of course, I can go ahead and double click on it, but that brings me into an entirely new timeline. And the problem with this is I completely lose context of any music or sound effects or other clips that were outside of this compound clip. So if I were to make changes, I wouldn't really know the exact timing on the music that's happening in the primary timeline. So if I needed to slide and edit just a few frames, I wouldn't be able to hear if this is still on the music. So once I back out, I've made those changes and of course they'll apply in the primary timeline, but they might be slightly off from what I originally had with the music. Now, of course I could apply this music clip into that compound clip, but maybe I want that music clip to apply to other clips on my timeline. So what I would do as a solution is rather than making it so we have to go inside of the compound clip, give us the ability to expand the compound clip inside of the primary timeline without breaking it apart. Right now I could select this clip, push command shift G, and that's going to break apart that clip, then we could of course slide this edit back into position and reapply it into a compound clip with option G. But I would much rather be able to just expand it, make those changes, and then re-collapse that compound clip without needing to make an entirely new compound clip. If you've ever tried to animate anything inside of Final Cut Pro, you might have noticed that the keyframe editor is really lacking. For example, with this circle, maybe I want it to pop into the frame. So I'll go on over to the scale, we can bring that down to zero, we'll click to add a keyframe, move forward just a little bit, and then set that to 100. Now if I push play, you'll notice how jarring this animation is. It just comes to a complete stop. There's no sense of easing. Now in a lot of video editors and animation inspectors, you might suspect that you could go down, we'll right click, select show video animation, and in here we can see our keyframes. Maybe you could right click on that keyframe, and then select some sort of easing option. However, specifically with scaling, I'll go ahead and make sure this is over on the scale parameter. If we right click, all we have the option for is deleting the keyframe. Now, I know that easing is possible in Final Cut Pro because the position parameter has it. For example, if I were to click to add a keyframe on position and then we can move this over to the right side, we can go ahead and go to the position settings and in here we can right click and now we can change it from linear to smooth. So this in a sense does give us some basic easing and in fact if I push play you can see that easing take place. But there's really not a lot of control. We could go ahead and select one of these and I'll push command and that allows us to kind of twist and turn this with a bezier key but that's about the extent of all of the control we have with the position parameter. So I really think that the keyframe editor in Final Cut Pro needs some big improvements. And the best way I can think of doing that is bringing the powerful keyframe editor that's in Apple Motion over to Final Cut. Pro. I think that is way easier said than done, but I think that if it happened, it would make Final Cut Pro a much, much more powerful piece of software. One of my favorite features in Final Cut Pro is the ability to save effects presets. For example, maybe inside of our video clips, we have a specific LUT that we like to use. So I could just look up custom LUT. We could apply that onto our video clip. We could go to the LUT, we could load in whichever we want. So I'll go ahead and use my friend Dylan John's LUTs. So we've applied that onto the clip. Maybe we want to have a specific color correction, more contrast or something. So I'll push command six, we'll add in more contrast and I'll just make this more severe than it needs to be just to really show my point. But once we've done all of the different effects we could possibly think of to a video clip that we use all the time, we could go to the bottom right and click on save effects preset. In here, we could just call it 
the custom color preset or whatever you want to call it. Then you can save it into a category, which I've created a faves category. Then from there we can push save. So now anytime I want to apply these exact same effects onto a video clip, I can just go on over to my faves category and we'll see custom color is here. So I can just click and drag that onto any new video clip and it's going to receive both the LUT and it's also going to receive the color wheels. This is extremely powerful and saves you so much time as a video editor. So it makes me scratch my head why we don't have this for titles. If I go on over to my titles and load in this Patreon download, I can bring this down on the timeline. It'll play out just like so. We could go inside of the title inspector. I could change the background color. We could change this text to say something like, welcome to my channel. And now anytime I wanna use this exact same title, I need to either bring a title back down on the timeline, make those same changes, or duplicate this title from one project to another. It would save me so much time if there was just a simple save title preset button. Of course, we can go in, we could right click and select open in motion. We can make those changes in motion and save it back to Final Cut Pro, but not everybody is proficient with motion and they just wanna stay inside of Final Cut Pro where they know how to edit. So if there was just a simple save title preset button down here, at the bottom that would save editors hundreds of hours of needing to duplicate over or recreate the exact same title over and over again and while we're at it if we could embed sound effects into those titles that would be a huge plus one of the easiest ways to level up as an editor is to use different motion templates. However, the installation process for Final Cut Pro is extremely clunky. As it is, I need to download the file. I'll go ahead and unzip this. Then I can go into my finder, go to movies, motion templates, effects, and then click and drag this folder into effects and that will allow me to install it. However, this doesn't always work for everyone because a lot of the times they need to go to their effects folder, push command I and make sure that it says effects.localize. Or what I see a lot of the time is somebody will go completely into the folder, find the motion templates folder, and then they'll just copy and paste all of this over into the effects folder. And this is not going to show up in Final Cut Pro at all. This causes a ton of friction to the user experience and it really does not feel very Apple-esque. So what I would love to see is a much closer approach to what DaVinci Resolve has. Rather than needing to click and drag folders into my movies folder, I could rather just have an installer from the motion template that I created and sold so that that user can just double click on it and push install. Now this installer was created with a third party app, but if Apple could just implement this into Final Cut Pro, it would make the user experience so much better. And maybe another alternative to that is just make it so a user can click and drag any motion templates folder into Final Cut Pro and have it install in that manner. That way it can auto figure out if it's an effect or a title or a generator and make it so the user doesn't need to know these things before they go to install. Now this next one is seemingly insignificant but it absolutely drives me crazy every time I have Final Cut Pro open and I plug in an SD card it brings up the import window now this wouldn't be so bad if it was once in a while but it's every single time I plug in an SD card. I very frequently plug in SD cards over the duration of a project. Maybe I needed to capture B-roll or something. And I almost never import off the SD card. I'm always bringing it in from Finder. So if I could just have a simple option, could be in the top right, bottom left, just a simple toggle on and off to open the import window when I plug in an SD card, that would be amazing. So those are just a few ways that I would love to see Final Cut Pro improve. Please let me know down in the comments, what are some other areas that you would love to see vastly improved in Final Cut Pro? And after you've written that comment, make sure you go follow the link and leave some feedback for Apple telling them exactly what features you'd love to see, what bugs you're experiencing. That way we know for sure they can read and hear our thoughts as creators and improve the software that we all know and love. If you enjoyed this video, consider pressing that like button and consider subscribing for new Final Cut Pro videos every single week. And you may wanna check out this video where I show you 10 free powerful plugins for Final Cut Pro in 2024. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.